Hey guys, I think I figured out what was wrong. The guy had to. I I forgot to open the bag. <laughs> so let me under the circumstances, see a pen probably wouldn't mind. There were a few uh, textbooks, a half-empty water bottle, and a large phone marked O'Malley Family History. This I decided was my query. I flipped through the page until I reached the information relevant to the 18th century, and I read my discoveries out loud. The Liverpool, based on O'Malley Shipping Company, ran for three generations of the family in the mid uh, mid to late 18th century until the loss of one of their shippers drove the company to bankrupt. See. The owner at the time, Chick O'Malley, O'Malley placed the blame somewhat irrationally on a shipped crate, which family legend alleged to be haunted that the time been on the ship at the time. There are numerous tales of bizarre events surrounding the crate, and the story of the crate's origin is no less mysterious. It goes that a strange young man came to a carpenter's at the Li Liverpool dockyards with a very expensive looking hard sugar which he insisted was he be special up and, and the wood used for whatever purpose the carpenter desired. He refused to leave until the edge had been utterly broken into its component parts and for of his eyes and the wood said to be made to crates for a belly shipping. When presented for his name, the man identified himself as one Jack Freyhorn. Ooh, the rooms of Jack Freyhorn, July 28th, 1888. Um, 1, so what trifle have you been wasting your father's money on now, Jack? What does it look like? It looks like a virgin or... A hot ship gourd, actually, in the famish style. Quite old, quite expensive. I suppose I should be grateful that something is distracting you from the occult for once. I fear you may be speaking too soon, my friend. Oh god, I should have known you and your silly obsession. So what delivery inhabit, inhabit this magnific magnificent instrument? The instrument is is as a whole is for the most part unrated by the realm. But excuse are what spark my interest. You unusually there you have been carved from centuries of old English oak. And that's the interesting part. I will not be d disheartened by that sharp tongue of yours. The wood has gone through many incarnations before being incorporated into this device. I am so finisher building material in fact just over 200 years ago, it was part of a wall. A wall of certain inn on well-traveled wooden rolls. The unicorn? I'm so pleased you remember. I could hardly forget it. The the way you have been obsessing quite hardly over it of late. Your co your correspondence persistent filled you with your head with rubbish about goodness and demons. I count myself very lucky to have tracked down every even a small piece of that whole story. I know I've already told you some of the wonderful stories attached to it. And this instrument had its fair share of mystery happenings. Mysterious happenings. The usual batch of strange noise, sudden madnesses, and unexpectable deaths. See sense, my friend? This curiosity of yours for all things ungodly has no doubt already befell your, immo your immortal soul. You are a fine fellow, Wilbur, but you have... A, not a drop of ferments in your body. <clears throat> now stop berating me for my inquiry mind and let and let us take the dinner. Nah, okay. That night, Jax was stirred from his bed by the sound of music emanating from his new instrument. His first thought was anger, mostly because that harp sword was an antique, never intended to be played. But then he listened to the haunting melancholy tune and felt his stomach roll unexpectedly with fear. Who's down there? Wilbur, is that you? Jack could not take a step further because he realized with a lurch that he recognized a dark figure that sat at the keys. <laughs> he had read of this strange entity that 
we occurred frequently in the stories surrounding Unicorn Inn, and the objects that were later constructed from its wood. And he knew absolutely certain that the tall man would destroy him, were he not destroyed first. No. Wait, is that a gun? Ake gun. Jack took the gun with him to confront the intruder. Use gun on day day mon. Use gun. On demon, I should probably be most <coughs> tab use gun on in in root her. use gun on. Demon. Ah! Use gun on intruder. Use gun on person. Ah! Shoot demon demon ah! shoot demon Don't you won't take me demon Ah oh, finally Gua Huh Wilbur No Oh god no but I could have sworn you I know you. You have have Oh God P please forgive me your your Majesty for my transgressions. I am a worthless craven fool not worthy a uh, second of your precious time. I beg you spare me I will redeem myself for my offence. I will be yours forever, my body, mind and soul. Oh, what a weirdo. Thank you, my lord. Oh God. I I identified himself as one Jack Fron. Well, this may well have been the same Jack Fron who went on to form a bizarre religious cult, a, de a depraved group of pagans worshippers who were spoken with such disrespect. My list flashed back. My knowledge of the history of the cursed one gained another step. Before the cr before the crate, it had been a hard hardship squad, and some time before the hardship squad, it had t been part of some kind of hostility in Wales. Uh, an inn called the Unicorn. Why did that ring a bell somewhere in my recent memory? I had I I definitely seen something in the Clam Browning Hotel that was linked to the place, but where? Co Pan? I'll be right back, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that. I need to turn off the TV. Anyway, let's take paper. Victim three, Freyhorn. The third man who desired judgment was Freyhorn, who had bought from those who made luxurious luxuries with the wood that was the prince's soul. The prince came and struck down the lover of Freyhorn, and Freyhorn knew the name of the king. And Freyhorn said, I know you now, O prince, and, wh and who was the ar arrogant man, and I anticipate your wish, I, and I will devote myself to spreading the teachings you have bought me and the love of our king. And the prince was satisfied, and Freyhorn called out, called all those who would listen, and they formed the order of the blessed agonies that would work to read them the follies of men and 
of the men of technology. Oh God, door! I better find what's going. I better find out what's going on here and quick. Uh, it might go into the hell world any second now. I think it was in the antiques room. Yeah, I thought so. From somewhere to the west, I heard the familiar sound of a door being unlocked. Huh, okay. Lakeman? Lakeman, wait! Oh, great. Open door. Eh. A horrible tormented soul is still lying on the center counter. Limbs arranged oddly from spasms of agony. Ah. Ah! Big system has a taste in this one. What? The time it can be made facing an action. Ah! Oh. What? Oh! I call bullshit! No! Oh! Oh! Oh no 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 no! Okay, I'll do the rest of this off screen.